Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. Well, given the long weekend, we have a couple of uh, diaries to catch up on. First one by Jesse, looking at the origin of some of the passwords being found in our SSH and Telnet data. This is typically brute force uh, password data. Now, the top passwords being found here are you know, common uh, default passwords. But what Jesse did is to dive deeper into the passwords, he looked at 250,000 passwords that were used against his own honeypot and then compared them uh, to uh, the have I been pwned list as well as uh, the rock you list. What surprised me a little bit is that uh, there is still I think about 30% of the data that was in neither list. Now some of the passwords being captured by our honeypots are actually not meant to be used as passwords and Jesse talks a little bit about this. So for example, sometimes you find essentially bash commands in the password field. That's often by fairly sort of simplistic bots that just throw the data at the honeypot and don't necessarily worry about whether or not the attacker is actually logged in. So after the initial username and password is rejected, when they are then starting sending bash commands, they end up again in password fields, which are then logged as passwords. Also kind of interesting that even some very long passwords are being used against the honeypots, some exceeding 40 characters can then be identified in the have I been pwned list. So attackers are certainly using some of these leaked passwords in order to help them brute force new devices. And remember how last week Didier published uh, this uh, really interesting uh, Yara rule in order uh, to uh, detect uh, these uh, polyclot uh, active uh, MIME uh, PDF uh, mal documents that were making the rounds. Uh, well, uh, today Didier did publish a bit more background on that rule, essentially how to create Yara rules for obfuscated strings. Didier starts out with a simple rule that detects that uh, these PDF active MIME uh, documents as he created them sort of as a proof of concept and then explains how to actually cover all the obfuscations that were found for this particular uh, kind of document in the wild uh, by searching a virus total. Interesting blog post in particular if you find yourself write your own Yara rules need a little bit more background as to how sort of to create uh, some real good Yara rules with the widest possible coverage. And then we got uh, more details regarding uh, recent uh, vulnerability in uh, VMware's Araya operations for networks product. This uh, vulnerability, CVE 2023-34039, was just uh, patched and, uh, well, it is one of those famous hard-coded SSH keys. So an attacker uh, in possession of this SSH key could use it in order to simply log in to your device. But of course, in order to exploit this, an attacker would need to have access to the respective keys. Well, uh, that has been fixed now, and a GitHub repository has been set up uh, with the respective uh, key pairs, going back to version 6.00, and then with all versions up to 6.9. So definitely do not lose any time patching this vulnerability. And Microsoft announced that future versions of Windows will no longer support TLS 1.0 and 1.1 out of the box. It will be disabled in the registry. Now the code to support TLS 1.0 and 1.1 will for now still be present and you should be able to enable it if you need to. This change starts becoming effective in September, so this month with Windows 11 Insider Preview, and then over the coming months will become the standard in new released versions of Windows. 
Of course, uh, TLS 1.0 and 1.1 have sort of been considered uh, insecure for quite a while now and uh, should no longer have been used. However, there's always the problem that there is legacy software out here. In this particular case, something to note is SQL Server 2016 that do not support anything but TLS 1.1. So in those cases, you really only have sort of two options. You can re-enable a TLS 1.1 Point one if you need it, or you could just go clear text, which probably is worse than keeping the older version of TLS around. Like I said, luckily the code is still there, so you can re-enable it. It's just not enabled by default. That's better than what I've seen in some other uh, TLS libraries or so that outright no longer contain the code for these legacy versions of TLS. Well, and that's it for today. And thanks uh, to everybody here who attended my talk today here in London. It was great to see some of the listeners in person. Always nice to sort of put some faces behind everybody here who is listening. And of course, it's sometimes really hard to tell if anybody is listening at all. So uh, thanks and well, uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.